Bienvenidos, Ushamadid, and welcome Michigan State University learners taking the Capstone Portfolio course. My name is Travis Bonfili, and I'm a current learner in the Capstone Portfolio course during the spring 2021 semester. This is my final course as a learner in the MAED program. In this video tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to use the Weebly Website Builder in order to work with text, images, and dividers. And this is one of the more challenging aspects of working with Weebly if you're unfamiliar with the tool. So as part of our first module, we were doing a portfolio review. And during that portfolio review, I saw one learner's portfolio in particular that showed their annotated transcript that had some really nice images in it. And I really liked the visual that the image, the image relayed. And then we had our text and everything here lines up just beautifully. And I thought to myself, what kind of an image could I put in in order to make my annotated transcript unique, yet personal, and something that related to the course? And so what I decided on, and let's come to the back end of my website here, what I decided on for my annotated transcript was to use the actual images from the D2L Desire to Learn Michigan State University learning system that would pop up every semester right as the course began. And as you can see, these are a listing of all the courses I've taken. And I've got placeholders in here right now for the text as to what it is I'm going to write. And I've put in some of the instructors, the names I could remember, but you'll notice that I have little divider elements here between each of the annotated transcript items. And so I've got the image that was presented to me as part of the MSU course in the D2L system. And now we're down to the final course, which is the capstone course. And so I'm gonna show you how to add an image in. I'm gonna show you how to add the text in, and then we're gonna put a final divider down here on the bottom that's in front of, or I should say above, the header image message I have right here, which is at the very bottom of the screen. So how is it that I'm doing all of these things? Well, the first thing that we're gonna add is a text element. So I'm going to come up here to the left hand side of the screen at the top. I'm going to grab the text box and I'm going to bring it down. Now remember, with the text boxes and any of the basic objects that you're grabbing to drag out onto the screen, onto your, um, your um, background here, Keep in mind that it's all about the blue line, right? You can barely see it, right? You can see it kind of bumps out the image there when I'm next to the image, but I don't want to be there. I want to be below. I don't want to be to the left of the image. I don't want to be to the left here because that would put me next to the text for the header image. I want to be right below the fall 2020 EAD 861 entry. So I would drag the text out here and you can see the blue line moves, right? So I've got it there. You could put it here as a divider, but we don't want to go in there. We want to come below the EAD 861 box. And then I simply release the mouse button. So you can see here, we've got this click to edit, but what am I missing? Yeah, I'm missing a divider between 861, EAD 861, and what is ultimately going to be my ED 870 entry for the capstone course. So let's grab a divider element and drag it out here to our canvas. That was the word I was looking for earlier, canvas. And again, watch that blue line. You see how the blue line kind of makes things move? Because that's where it would get dropped. So I want it between these two. So I'd bring it to the middle of the screen and then release the blue my, my uh, mouse button. And now it drops the divider in there for me. So now we've got this really nice, clean, uniform look. And again, my images, I like that subdued sort of black and white look. And I'm going to show you the filter I'm using to make my images all look as close to the same as possible. Again, some of them are going to look a little bit different just because of the colors that were in there initially. So I've got this little 
text element here. I put the divider on top of it. Now I need to get my image in here. How does that work? Well, I'm going to come up here to the image box in the upper left hand corner and I'm going to drag it down and look, you can see as soon as I bring it to the canvas, take a look at what happens here. It starts impacting. Like every time I drag it next to one of these other elements, you can see it's asking me and prompting me here. Hey, is this where you want to drop that uh, image element? Because that's where I would put it. And again, if I was to make a mistake and let's say that I release the mouse button early here, you see that we end up now with two images with dividers between both. If I made a mistake, I can simply mouse over the image and then click on the X to delete that image. And then it returns what I had to its previous form. So again, we come up and we grab the image box. We come down here and look, you can see all that activity with the blue line, right? Kind of prompting me, hey, do you want to put it here? Do you want to put it here? Well, we want to put it right next to ED870. Now, don't make the mistake of dragging it out here, right? Because you can see where it put the blue line. The blue line is your cue as to where this element will land on your canvas. So let's drag it here. And again, if I come away from the, the edge right there, right? And bring it out here into the gray area, you can see that is where we want that element to be. And then I release my mouse and now we have our image box. Now my recommendation after having done this nine times for this assignment is to manipulate the divider first. Now my divider, it drags over to a set spot you can see right here. And that's actually an increment that's already built in. You can see if I just keep dragging to the left slowly, you don't want to drag too quick, drag slowly and then simply release the mouse button. It turns the divider from blue back to gray. And what I've noticed is when I bring my images in, they all kind of size up around the same size. Now, if you wanted to manipulate that, you could resize the image. I have found that again, once I do this, that the image, which we'll see here, let's go out and grab that course image, the spring 2021 capstone image. We'll double click on that. And you'll notice that the capstone portfolio image is pretty much the same size as these other images, right? Now, might it be a little bit off? It may be. But again, if you're just kind of scrolling through here, the images do appear to be pretty close to the same size with the exception of this one here. Uh, this one looks a little odd. It doesn't look as tall as the others. Maybe I'll go back and re-screenshot that and bring it in to try to get it a little bit closer. But for the most part, everything sort of lines up. So now I could bring and put my text in here. So I can say, oops, sorry, not fall. We'll say spring. 2021 and I'll put a dash here and this is ED870 because I'm a member of the MAED program, the Master of Arts and Education program. We'll put a colon and I'll say capstone portfolio course. Whoops, portfolio course. And my instructors, instructors are uh, I'm, I, can't, I can't remember how to spell the last name. It's Dr. Kohler and Dr. Uh, Eric Gaunt. So I'm going to have to check on those names, but that's okay. So we'll leave it just like that. And now I want this text to stand out a little bit, right? The semester, the course uh, number identifier, and the description for the course, the short description, just adult learning. And then the instructors, I want to have that a little darker. So we're going to highlight that text. I'll click here on the A and I'll click on the little black box and we'll go italicized and bold to make it stand out a little bit from what is going to be the regular text that I would enter in. And again, this ED870 here, that's simply a placeholder for me so that when I come back in and I begin to enter in my annotated transcript entries, I'm ready to go. I can just simply backspace over that and I could start typing. So let's put ED870 back in here as a placeholder. So now we're going to edit the image because again we want it to look uniform the same as the other images we have here so you simply click on the image now i could edit the image i could replace the image so we're interested in editing the image so i click on edit image and this is going to open up a new box you can see you can change the focus 
You can add text. We can adjust certain settings. If I click on adjust it, we could do the brightness, the saturation, the contrast. But there's also some filters that exist. As you can see here, they've got a number of built-in filters and they've got some black and white ones. I am a huge fan of the 1920 black and white filter here. Now you'll notice it says all. There are a whole host of these, right, that you can go by category if you didn't want to have to continue to scroll to the right trying to locate something. So I'll click on black and white and you can see the 1920 is right there. And I like that shiny kind of finish that the 1920 filter has. And then we simply click save. So once I've clicked on save, you can see there is my capstone capstone portfolio co course entry. Now I want to do a box around it. You'll notice that these other ones have this black sort of box around it. So I'm going to say light box. We'll come down here to advanced. And for a border, we're going to say a thick border. And that's what I've used in all my other images. The border color will use black. And you can see it just kind of drop that black border around it. And this is the alt text. Maybe someone comes in with a browser and maybe that browser doesn't understand how to read this image and can't display this image properly. So I'll simply have it display ED870 for the capstone course. So I can simply hit the back button or I could just click out here into my canvas. And as we can see, everything looks good. The final thing I'm going to do is bring a divider out. And again, remember that blue line drives everything with these elements you're bringing out to your canvas. And I'll simply bring it out so that it's all the way across the screen below ED870, but above the header image element. You see what happens there? If I come down a little further, if I go down here, it's going to drop it below that element. So I bring it right there. I release my mouse. And now we have our divider. And I think that looks pretty nice. And again, I'm a big fan of the black and white subdued look here. And this is sort of the theme I have across my site. As a photographer, I really enjoy black and white photography. And so this is how I've personalized my annotated, bib, uh, my annotated transcript in my capstone portfolio course. The final thing we're going to do is we're going to publish those changes. Remember, the changes don't take effect unless you click that publish button up here in the upper right hand corner. So let me come out to not the back end of my website. Here is travispbonfeely.com. Let me refresh it. And this is the site that users are going to hit. This is the homepage that users will land on when they go to travispbonfeely.com. And you want the user experience to be good. That way they enjoy looking at the content that you have. I've got a scrolling effect here, as you can see. And this is my introduction to the Capstone Portfolio website that I've created. Let's take a look at the annotated transcript page and let's see what it's going to look like for the user. I've got my header up here that says annotated transcript. I've got my Michigan State image as part of the header image. And then as we scroll down, you can see that this is what visitors to the site are going to see. And again, maybe this image here might need a little work. You can see here it's in terms of the border, it doesn't match up with the black border. So maybe I need to go back and take a look at that. Uh, but these last set of images, everything looks great. And there is the ED870 course that we just added. All right, well, that is going to do it for this tutorial video on using the Weebly website builder and working with text, images, and dividers. I hope this is going to assist you if you've chosen Weebly as your website building tool for your capstone portfolio course. Let me know what you think about the video. Hopefully, again, it's been able to streamline your website creation. And thank you so much for watching and best of luck to you in your capstone portfolio course. Have a great semester.